Hey, everybody. I don't even have anybody's pictures up today. Crystal, you're always on. Where are you? I'm coming. Can you guys hear? You guys can hear me. Did you guys all have to update your zooms? I didn't. I didn't either. I didn't know there was an update. It made me update all my computers. I'm like, oh no. There she is, Miss America. Okay, how's everybody doing? Cold. Cold? Well, are you gonna whine? Get a, yeah. Get a blanket or something. Whoa, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are <clears throat> we are beyond the halfway point. Before we get started today, I just want to I want to explain to you how this week's going to go. Um, in fact, let me let me go and find my canvas. And uh, I think <clears throat> let's go here and. Um, Sorry, I just choked down a whole bunch of ribs and I'm, they're all caught in my throat now. All right. <clears throat> so this week, you probably saw it in your canvas. If it comes up here, there we go. Um, why is it all there? All right. So starting the... It's due on the 16th, but it'll be open. This uh, this uh, midterm will be opened up, I think, tonight. I'll make sure it is tonight. <clears throat> but what, but what I'm going to require you for for a midterm this week, and it's going to be super simple, and uh, um, and so we won't meet on Thursday. So you'll have all the time in the world to do it, and it won't be due until uh, our next class. And if it's after that, you'll lose some points for it. But all I'm requiring you to do is to do is to write. Two, 250 words, which half page little essays about anything that we've taught on so far, whether it's, <clears throat> whether it's a you know, common rail fuel system, uh, e, uh, EGR turbochargers, uh, Huey systems, low pressure fuel, diesel fuel itself, anything you want to, anything you want to write about and just tell me about some part of it. Okay. I just want it to be accurate. And I want it to have good English and, and, is, and make it readable, okay? I will give you 10 extra points for every half page one article that you write above that if you want to write about each one of the items. If you Because it, it doesn't take very long to write a half a page. <clears throat> so if you guys want to get some extra credit, I will give you 10 points extra credit for every one that you do. Okay, but you have to do two in order to get your 100 points for your midterm. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we won't meet on Thursday. We'll we'll meet again next Tuesday. So then we'll have next Tuesday and, and Thursday. Um, and then we'll have the Tuesday of Thanksgiving. And then I, we won't meet for Thanksgiving, obviously. And then we'll have... Uh, one week, uh, Tuesday after that will be week eight. And then uh, the Thursday of week eight will be a, a mid, I mean, a final. So that's all we have laid out in front of us. So it, <clears throat> it should go pretty quick. Um, in this week, I think this week we have, or next, actually next week, you can see this, you can't see this yet, but next week we're going to have a, um, a uh, um, another web-based training and it's not that long but it all pertains to some of the after treatment systems and next week's pretty light and the, the next week should be pretty light they're not real heavy weeks so it shouldn't be that big a deal for you guys 
and we're going to try to we're going to try to slip in a bunch of diagnostic processes in the middle. I got some diagnostic things we're going to do today with the, involved with EGR, and uh, and so it, the rest the rest of this time should go pretty easy. I'm, I'm also going to slip in a. Um, in fact, I might make this available to you guys earlier than next week if you want. And then um, and then there's also one more web based training that's about 160 pages long. Um, that's that's worth seeing it's it's a, it's it's a, about some of the older engines but it's worth seeing so anyway let me get rid of this and let's go back and let's find i have is it here it's not here it, what did i do with it there it is let's bring up egr systems okay so what are EGR systems? What is it all about? And what, what is it we're trying to accomplish with EGR systems? So an EGR system is an in-cylinder um, emission strategy to try to deal with emissions before they're produced, as opposed to catalytic converters, SCRs and everything that we're going to talk about next week, everything that's in the exhaust system, all the after treatment systems, that's all trying to take care of trying to take care of the exhaust after it is um, um, been made. But we're going to try to, with EGR systems, we're going to try to stop the production of noxious gases before they get into the exhaust stream. So how are we doing that? <clears throat> And not that this picture means anything about it, other than the fact that you can see in a diesel engine, 26% of all NOx emissions that are produced are produced from diesel engines. This was based on the back in the 80s. <clears throat> Today's diesel engines have zero exhaust emissions coming out the tailpipe. We have, well, I can't say totally zero, but close. Crystal, are you able to hear us or are you struggling with something there? I can hear you. Okay. This just looked like you were trying to get something working and make sure you could hear me. Okay. <laughs> but if you see this chart right here, if you look all the way to the left of this chart, some of the pre-control stuff before they tried to, before they tried to do anything, just how high all the emissions were. And if you go all the way to the right, the the tier three 17, 2017 and later vehicles, those vehicles were had to reduce their uh, emissions by 80% less than the 98.8% that was reduced from, from over here. So in other words, they took, they, they completely, there's like no, nothing coming out the tailpipe anymore and that's kind of the wonder of everything that's going on we have the egr systems it's kind of taking care of it in strategy and then we're going to we're going to talk in the next couple of weeks about all the after treatment stuff and all these emission control things they're they're important because it kind of help keep everything clean keep the you know environment clean and we're going to talk about you know what some of these gases are doing to us and stuff but uh um they're they're some of the most challenging um, systems on the vehicle to keep working and to keep uh, and to diagnose and it's really difficult because you know we're dealing with stuff in the exhaust chemicals and all kinds of weird stuff going on in the exhaust and, and so they're they're really really sensitive to all kinds of problems and they're really difficult to diagnose <clears throat> so and and I'm going to be really honest with you for probably the first four or five years of these things even being out there and us trying to fix them. Ford's, if you, if you can watch Ford's class on this, the, the web-based class on this after treatment stuff, it kind of talks about it a little bit, but it doesn't really, it really doesn't explain what in the world's going on. And it was very difficult for a lot of years to even, even, even know that the SCR actually had a catalyst inside it and, and what's inside there and everything. It was, it was a very, I don't know, it was a, it was a well-kept secret from all the manufacturers and it made it very difficult to try to understand. So I'm going to try to 
help you guys get a handle and get an understanding of what all this stuff is. Because if you understand how all this stuff works, you're going to have a lot better chance trying to figure out why it doesn't work if it doesn't. So what is a, I'm going to deviate a little bit from these slides. We're going to talk about um, EGR in itself. Okay. So it is an in, in, um, in cylinder strategy to try to take care of. We've already, we've already covered that. But what is it that we're trying to do? <clears throat> Diesel engines or all engines, internal combustion engines will produce NOx at some level. Uh, uh, gas engines do at a very small, much smaller level and they do it they do it in a whole different kind of way. And, and you can get into the readings that I put in the canvas. If you really want to find out that out, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time with that here, but a diesel engine, <clears throat> because of the way we produce um, the heat inside of, a, a, you know, higher compression ratios, we're turbocharging them. So we have much more, uh, much higher pressures inside the combustion chamber and we have really high, combustion temperatures. Okay. So what happens is anything above 2,500 degrees will start forming NOx. Okay. So, and we'll talk about what NOx is here in a second. So anything above 2,500 degrees is going to, is going to exponentially increase the production of, of NOx. Plus the high pressures in the cylinder are, are aggravated on nitrogen, which is what our atmosphere is what 76% nitrogen. Is that right? Something somewhere around that neighborhood, <clears throat> 75, 76%. It usually in the combustion process is, a, is, is stated out of it. It doesn't, it doesn't affect it. It doesn't help it. It doesn't hurt it. It doesn't do anything. But when we get to those high pressures and high temperatures, all of a sudden nitrogen starts to react under all that, under that pressure. Okay. And that creates the problem. We end up uh, oxidizing the nitrogen. Now, when we say NOx, <clears throat> the X means an nitrogen with an, an oxygen with an, an a indiscriminate number of oxygen particles, okay? Which means there's about, I want to say, five or six different um, compounds that are turned into NOx. Some of them are completely harmless. Some are actually good for the environment. But there's two <clears throat> that we're really concerned about which is NO, which is nitrogen monoxide or nitrous, nitric acid, which isn't of itself a really, is, isn't in itself a really bad gas, but nitrogen dioxide is, okay? That would be NO2. That's the bad gas that, that has the reddish brown color, gets in the ozone or gets in the atmosphere, gives us the red color in a smoggy day and all that stuff. But the NO that we're concerned about, what happens is as the cylinder, as the, as the combustion process takes place, the nitrogen turns into NO, takes on an oxygen particle, but it's a very unstable NO nitrous oxide or nitrogen, nitrogen monoxide is exceedingly unstable um, molecule, okay, because it only has one um, oxygen particle or ever how it works. I'm not a chemist, but so it's very unstable. So as the um, at the post combustion, as soon as combustion starts to come down and cool off, it attracts other ox oxygen particles. And that's where we get into the problem. And we have problems with the NO2, which is the uh, nitrogen dioxide. That's the real bad one that we need to worry about. And there's a bunch of other compounds that it makes that aren't a, an, is a big issue, but it's just those two gases that we're trying to deal with. Okay. That happens inside of a combustion chamber on a diesel for a variety of reasons because we have the high pressure and stuff. And remember our diesel fuel, when it's inside that cylinder, it's remember it's an oxygen rich situation. It's not like a gas engine where you have a stoichiometric blend of, of fuel and air that's perfect. We have oxygen rich uh, system in there, uh, cylinder inside there. And we have fuel that's sprayed in there and it starts to stratify and we have, so it's a different layers inside there. And so you have different places where it's going to, uh, you, you're going to have higher pressures and, and, and create higher temperatures. And that's where your NOx formation is going to take place. So what we're doing with EGR, and that's what EGR stands for is exhaust gas recirculation. We're going to reintroduce exhaust gas back into the intake system into the cylinder so that we can <clears throat> it's going to do a couple of things 
the the exhaust is going to because it's mostly carbon dioxide because remember what's going out the tailpipe of a diesel is mostly car carbon dioxide so there's lots of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will absorb more heat than oxygen okay so it will help to cool the combustion chamber down it also gets in there and i think i've got a cool slide in here um i will in a minute we'll go through these slides quickly after i get done but pontificating here but but what it does is it it causes the particles of fuel and oxygen to kind of separate. It gets in between them. And it and what it does is it slows the combustion process down. So we don't get the real high peak temperatures and high peak pressures. Because remember, it's the high peak temperatures and pressures that are causing the knocks. So if we can, if we can cool the engine, the cylinder down a little bit and kind of control that uh, burn, then we can stop the formation of knocks before they even happen. When, 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 by doing that, then we can, and, and that, that comes with all kinds of other problems. Um, but at any rate, that's in a nutshell, what we're trying to do. Um, so what's the big deal about NOx? Well, NOx gets into the atmosphere. It goes up into the atmosphere and uh, nitrogen dioxide will, will start. What happens is it starts to break down under sunlight and then the sunlight um, turns it into ozone, okay? That's O3. And so what's the big deal about ozone? I thought ozone was supposed to be good. Did we have problems with the hose, holes in the ozone a few years ago or something like that? Well, ozone's okay in the, is it the stratosphere that's up on the top and then the troposphere is below it or something like that? It's bad when it's below and okay when it's in the top. So it, it causes a photochemical reaction and that's where we get all, all our gray or the reddish color, the um, smog and all that stuff. So the, in a nutshell, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reduce it. it and it's bad for us in a whole other ways. I actually, next week with the, uh, next week or the week after with, with the SCR system, I've got a really good video. The girl really explains it really well, a whole lot better than me. So anyway, that's, that's what's happening. So let's kind of go through these slides a little bit. Um, and we'll, we'll try to cover about how it is that we're inter, going to introduce it, what it's maybe explain a little bit more about how and why it's all happening. But uh, we're going to, we'll probably be able to blow through some of these pretty quick. Um, we already covered that. We covered that. And I will post this, uh, but I, I want to get through these. I have some, I did some um, operations today at work that I put on here. That I want to show you, and you can see the we can see the formation of of nitro or of NOx in the exhaust in the absence of EGR. It's kind of fun. So um, one of the things here that's important is we start talking about uh, uh, different oxides, nitrous oxide, and all these different things. See, one of the one of the gases that can be produced is nitrous oxide, which that's a good gas. That's laughing gas. If you go to the if you go to the um, dentist and they put gas uh, gas in your face that's laughing gas they also use it in uh, race cars it's it's a perfectly safe gas um, <clears throat> and here's your here's your a picture of of how the all that stuff kind of affects the ozone i don't even see where they put those yeah it creates the photochemical smog in the in the ozone the o3 in here that becomes an issue you don't necessarily need to know all this stuff, but it's just kind of nice to kind of get a handle on it. And these are all the these are all the different places where these things come. You know, all these pollutants come from. And but they, at the end of the day, the sun they start to react with the sun, and that becomes our problem. So, <clears throat> um, this is just a kind of a picture of of NOx formation in diesel. Too high pressures and temperatures we get excess NOx. But, if, but on the flip side of that, if we start, if we have too cold a temperature, too low, then we end up with uh, using excess fuel and uh, making soot. <clears throat> so there's a, there's a window in there in which we, want, we need to maintain to keep that pollutants going out the tailpipe from happening. <clears throat> um, so... Yeah, these uncontrolled, we talked about all that. We already talked like this. Talked about that. 
I got ahead of myself. Here's the picture. This is a really good picture of, of what we're trying to accomplish here is to keep the, we're, we're just kind of try to spread the, uh, the, exhaust gases back in here and it's just going to slow you know get in between the air and the fuel particles particles to try to slow that combustion down so it doesn't happen as quickly and as high high pressures give it more even now one of the things that that's going to do is is if we're going to slow that combustion down now we need to make sure that we have enough time as that cylinder burns we have enough time for that cylinder to burn all the fuel and make all the power you need to do. So what they're going to do on all these engines, uh, if they're if they're designing an engine that's going to have EGR, which they've done when they designed the six liter, when they designed the six seven, when they designed the three liter and the three two, all these engines were were designed to have EGR on them. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to design them with longer strokes, so that we already do that with a lot of diesels. If they're going to have a longer stroke. But we're going to make it a longer stroke engine so that they can, um, so that we can slow the burn down, and make it longer, and so we can burn all the fuel we want to burn and get all the power we want to do and keep the emissions good. So you've got kind of all that stuff happening all at the same time. Um, so we we're going to talk a little bit more. We talked last week about the fact that we've got um, with turbochargers, we put. Um, variable geometry turbos in so that we can get pressure in there. We'll, we're going to talk about that in just a second, if you'll get with me, bear with me here. Um, and that's going to have to do with our metering of that. We already talked about that. We talked about that. Okay, that's an important. That's important. That's that is a test question. Twenty. I'm circling it with my finger. You need the pointer. Twenty five hundred degrees is the magic number. Okay, that is it. That will be a test this week, and it will be a test on your final. <clears throat> so, um, we talked about that. We EGR is going to slow down combustion speed. And it's going to absorb the, the, because it's high in CO2, it's going to absorb those temperatures. And this is another test question this week, and we'll be on your final. Specific heat, okay, that is a specific word right there. Specific heat is the amount of heat required for a single unit of mass of a substance to be raised by one degree of temperature, okay? So, what I was saying a little bit ago was that when we introduce exhaust gas back in, exhaust gas, which is high in CO2, can absorb more heat than just regular air. So it will help cool the combustion chamber. Okay. So specific heat is an answer. Such a nice guy giving you the answers. Um, so here we go with the stroke engines. Stroke length of many engines, uh, diesel engines are going to be, or with EGR, are going to be longer. It's necessary to convert more energy into mechanical energy. Um, so, I mean, that just goes to show you that, that you know, it's going to have a longer stroke so that it, we can burn more. I just explained that to you. Um So drawbacks, let's talk about the drawbacks of using EGR. It's, it's, it's obvious we're, we're, we're throwing exhaust gas back in there and it's, and it's really detrimental to gas engines. It really costs a lot of power, but it costs power in a diesel engine as well. So you're gonna get one to 10%, uh, you're gonna use more 10% more fuel um, using EGR. Okay, so we're gonna we're 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 robbing the fuel or the engine of fuel economy by introducing EGR. Okay, we're gonna contaminate the engine oil um, more because of EGR because they they build soot and that soot is abrasive. Because remember, we're putting we're putting dirty exhaust gas back into the intake system. So we're taking all that dirty exhaust, 
We're putting it back in the intake system. We're going to start burning that and, and running that in the cylinders. So now you have soot burning down in there and it's going to, that can wear on the cylinders. Because remember a diesel before was, was all it pumped was air, and, you know, and then it had its combustion and then blew it out. It was, they wore rel relatively well, wore relatively well. But when we start putting exhaust gas back inside there, now we're putting a bunch of crud inside there. So now you start wearing engines out. We have soot problems that, that you know, washes the rings and it gets into the oil and all kinds of problems. And one of the things they do with diesel engines, especially ones with EGRs, we're going to put bigger oil pans on them so you can have more oil. If you have more oil, you can that oil can suspend more crud between oil changes. And so diesel engines have a lot of oil in them uh right there EG, larger oil pans um so another problem that you, you rerun into is the fact that as that exhaust gas comes into that engine it isn't going to come it doesn't necessarily come into the engine evenly so some cylinders might get more exhaust gas or might get all the crud from it so you end up with engines that that by design wear out certain cylinders because of the way the exhaust gas comes back into them. We also have problems with water condensation in the exhaust, haven't given problems, the formation of, of acids inside the combustion chamber and in the exhaust and all kinds of stuff. So a lot of problems that we can have um, because of having this exhaust gas in there. But so the manufacturers have to weigh out what's, you know, the, the, the government saying, hey, we've got to clean the emissions up the manufacturers got to decide what's the best way to, to clean these emissions up. And, you know, we're going to do some with EGR and some out the tailpipe. So, but, but we can't do one or the other. Um, the more EGR we do on the engine, the, the, the more, the, the less, the less it performs, the more performance, um, is taken away. So there's a limit to how much we can do to the engine itself before we start doing it to the exhaust. And there's no way that they that they can the exhaust alone, the exhaust uh, after treatment systems alone can fix the emissions problems coming out of the engine. So we need it. We need the balance of both things. Now they they used to use. Um, uh, well, let's just finish these here before I go on. Uh, so we're gonna have. We're going to, we'll talk about them here in a minute. We have cooled EGR systems. In other words, we're putting EGR coolers and stuff to try to cool that gas coming into the engine that we're going to use coolant to do that. But that's what that's going to do is raise the temperature of the coolant. Uh, it's going to raise underhood temperatures a lot. Um, so a lot more cooling system maintenance, a lot more, um, just a lot more problems because of all that heat. We have EGR valves that get gummed up because the exhaust is yucky. And if, if you have a diesel engine that's not running right, it starts putting uh, raw fuel and half burnt fuel and stuff into the tailpipe. We end up with this gooey, yucky stuff that gets into the EGR, gets into the exhaust. It gums up everything. So we have lots of problems with that. Uh, we have problems with EGR coolers failing. We have coolant getting into the engine. We have it getting into the exhaust. We have um, all kinds of problems with that, or we can get exhaust into the uh, into the cooling system and fail the cooling systems. Just just plethora of problems with EGRs. Um, it says it's necessary on almost all diesel engines. I do not know of a diesel engine that does not have EGR. That a new modern engine. Um, so, so when we, there's other strategies for reducing NOx in, in diesel engines besides using an EGR. In some of the early ones, they would retard timing, um, you know, try to, by re, re, retarding timing, they were cooling down the combustion chamber, trying to do some things to reduce NOx. They introduced in 1999, we introduced uh, charge air coolers, which is the radiators for the charge air system, um, because that by reducing that air temperature going in the engine, that helped reduce NOx. So they've had different strategies all along to try to reduce NOx as it came along, but it just got to the point where they had to put EGR systems on there. And, and, and one of the things that we, we get by having the Huey systems and the common rail systems is 
we can have those higher pressures in the, in the cylinders and we can keep those higher pressures with EGR and we've got the ability to inject fuel perfectly timed at this, with the perfect rates that we want into those really high pressures. So we've got, we have the ability to do that and keep that run engine running at peak performance and keep the uh, uh, NOx emissions down. So it really, you, they've really been able to come and make great strides with some of the new injection systems. One of the things that if we put, the more EGR we put in there, the engine starts to run worse and we start having really high carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon and particulates. So there's that, again, that balance of what we're going to try to accomplish on these things. Um, all right. So there are many different types of EGR systems out there. However, Ford uses one type on every one of theirs, and it's called high pressure cooled. There are low pressure cooled where they, uh, low pressure uncooled where they're going to bring the EGR in and it's going to be introduced in the airstream before the turbocharger. And then, the, then all the exhaust is going to go through the turbocharger before it gets inside. Super dirty, super dirty system. Um, and there's, there's, I don't know, there's a couple of different types, but Ford doesn't deal with them. Ford uses all high pressure cooled. So we're going to talk about how a high pressure cooled system works. Okay. Remember we talked about in the, um, in the um, turbocharger class that if we're going to try to put exhaust gas into the cylinder and the turbocharger is pushing high pressures in there, if you had, if you had 20 pounds of boost coming in the cylinder in the, in the intake, but you only had five pounds of exhaust back pressure coming in, who's going to win intake pressure. We're never going to get the exhaust in there. So we have to pressurize that exhaust to get it into the cylinder. So what we're going to do, and, and we talked about it last week, we're going to, sh we're going to close down the veins on the EGR. That's going to create exhaust back pressure. And we're going to, by creating that exhaust back pressure, we're heating up that exhaust. But what's the problem with heat? We're trying to cool things down. So we're going to take that pressurized exhaust and we're going to put it through an EGR cooler. It's just a, just a big metal tube with uh, water coolant running through it. Coolant is going to come one direction. Exhaust gas is going to come the other direction. And, and we're going to reduce the heat out of that exhaust and then and, and it's under pressure and we're going to introduce it into the intake stream and it will always be higher pressure than the than the boost pressure so that they so that the exhaust goes into the intake the intake pressure doesn't go into the exhaust okay and i got a picture right here so we have a um this is your intake side right here this guy here will be your variable geometry turbo, and this is all your exhaust. So the exhaust is trying to go out, pass the turbo and out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna close down this and we're gonna, we're gonna cause an exhaust restriction here. And this exhaust restriction is gonna pressurize this exhaust through a uh, EGR valve. Um, the EGR valve on a Ford is usually gonna be over here, but it, it doesn't matter, it's just a picture. But we're gonna we're gonna put exhaust through a cooler. This is gonna cool the exhaust, and it's gonna come through here, and end up in the intake manifold. Does that make sense to everybody? Am I losing you, or do you get it? Nobody's answering me. Yes. Okay. So the parts of this system are. The VGT, which is the turbo, the VGT turbo. We're going to have an EGR cooler. Um, the I know that the 3.2 has a mixer. I don't think the 6 liter or the 6.7 have a mixer. We're going to have an EGR valve. We're going to have the tubing for it. We're going to have some sort of a device bringing it into the intake manifold. And we're going to have sensors and some output devices that make it all happen. 
Um, I think we talked about that. That's just redundant. We've already talked about that. Uh, okay, so so the the beauty of the uh, variable geometry turbo is that, that we can do this, and that's and that is the reason the variable geometry turbo was even introduced was to be able to do this it was to be able to pressurize that exhaust. But beyond that. We're, that we were able, we talked about it last week, that we we're able to take that turbocharger and then do other things with it and really be able to increase performance and make it um, uh, really boost our performance and our um, power output. So the exhaust, uh, so exhaust coolers, the exhaust is sent through metal tubes. We just talked about that through a heat exchanger. Uh, it's going to lower the combustion chamber temperature so that it can absorb the heat. If we send it in there hot, well, then it can't absorb heat. So we're going to send it in there cold. When I say cold, we're talking maybe 400 degrees instead of 800 degrees. So when we're talking, but, but it's relative, but we're, we're going to put it in there. Cool, so it's going to cool so it can absorb that heat. Okay. Inside the cooler itself, there's going to be vent hoses so that it, it cause it gets a lot of heat, a lot, a lot of heat goes into those EGR coolers. And, and so we're going to have some a vent hose on the top that's going to just vent back into the degas bottle so that it doesn't get, uh, uh, you know, vapors and, and vapor lock and get, uh, you know, air trapped in there and, and overheat. A very EGR coolers, I think maybe I have a picture. Do I have a picture of a cooler in here? Uh, yeah. So, so. These are, I don't have a six liter, six, seven cooler in here. These, these coolers are, you know, they're just, you know, some kind of like a little radiator heat exchanger thing. And they're super sensitive to heat. They're, they're, you know, they work really good if they've got coolant in them. But what happens to them is if they get like real common, super common on a six liter, <clears throat> if somebody, something happens to somebody's radiator, the radiator tank, cracks or something like that and they run it out of coolant and all of a sudden they're driving down the road and it runs out of coolant and the temperature gauge pegs they pull it over the side of the road real quick oh i ran out of coolant they tow it in the shop we look at it hey your radiator's bad we put a radiator in it check it out everything's good i can promise you i can promise you almost every time in two weeks that guy's back blowing smoke out the tailpipe because his egr cooler failed because what happened is his radiator went bad, the rate, all the coolant went out of it. And now you don't have any coolant inside that EGR cooler. We've well, got pert near 800 degree air coming into this, this, this cooler. And now all of a sudden this thing's frying hot. Well, it, it ruins the, they either cracks them or ruins the solder joints inside of them and they fail and it may not fail. They don't fail right now, but they're, they're, you know, in two weeks time, they just can't take it anymore and they break. And what happens is they, 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 they internally break and then they send coolant will leak and then go into the, into the exhaust and run out the tailpipe and start smoking white. And, or the other way they'll fail is, is there, is there's more pressure in the EGR. Remember, cause when we, when we, we boost that and we close those VGT veins, we can be, we can be making, you know, 40, 50 pounds of exhaust back pressure in that thing. And that just goes in and pressurizes the um, cooling system and blows it out the radiator cap. So we have lots of problems, lots of problems with that. The other problem that we have is, and, and uh, I don't, that's not a very good picture of this. The other problem that we have is that the six liter itself, the coolant that runs into the EGR cooler runs through the oil cooler first. So if it goes through, in fact, let me, I wonder if I can do this, if there's a screen, let me do this. Let me see if I can draw a picture for you. Um, I draw, so let's see what color I'm drawing, okay. So the, the coolant, is going to come up, going to come up out of the block, and it's going to run through a cooler, an oil cooler. 
okay? Then it's gonna come out of that cooler and then it's gonna run into the EGR cooler. And then that's gonna go back, Let's see, it runs in, then it runs back into the block, okay? And, and, and then it recirculates all the way around wherever it comes back to, okay? So what happens, this, this, let me get a, another color here. So our engine oil, I mean, our, yeah, our engine oil, it's coming up here and it's in a heat exchanger here and it goes back down to the oil. Okay. So what happens is as the, as the, this the engine oil cooler here is just a heat exchanger that's supposed to be taking the heat away from the oil. The, what happens is the coolant that comes through the oil cooler gets cruddy, whether it's people don't take care of it. If they use uh, tap water that becomes, uh, it has so many heavy metals and, and alkaline and all kinds of junk in it. You know, you know, your, um, your shower head get how it gets all the, all the, you know, white buildup on it and all that stuff. And in Southern California, all that, if you put tap water in, in a, diesel engine with an EGR cooler and oil cooler, you're just asking for problems because that's all it's going to build up in there. Or if they've got, if they don't take care of it, it gets full of mud, anything, it all settles inside that oil cooler. So now all of a sudden this becomes restrictive in here and all the oil can't, um, you get these restrictions in here and now all of a sudden we can't get any flow through here. So the coolant doesn't flow through here and it ends up starving this it's no oil or coolant and it starves it and it's the same thing you don't get any you're not getting enough coolant flow in here to get rid of the heat the egr cooler overheats ruins the weld joints and the and the solder joints or however they're built and boom you end up with a failed egr cooler that is a super big problem with a, a six liter EGR system, you, it was, it was a huge, huge problem with those engines. Um, and the, and the fix for it was we would flush the cooling systems really, really, really well. We would replace the oil cooler and the EGR cooler and, and get a moving. And what you, and you could test this by, um, if the oil, the coolant temperature and the oil temperature, if they're being exchanged with each other right here, they should be relatively the same temperature. But if we were up here, if we would, we'd probably, we, we could get to maybe a hundred or 200 and 220 degrees here. That's not bad, but we would get, we could get up here to 260 degrees or something like that in your oil temperature, because you're not getting the heat away from your oil. And that would be your, your key is you'd have a temperature split. You were allowed a 15 degree split. That wasn't too bad. 15 degree split between your engine coolant and your engine oil temperatures uh, on that six liter. Anything above that, you knew you had a restriction in here and you were going to be starving your EGR cooler and have a failure. So um, the end of the day, the, the lesson on that is take care of your cooling system, especially on your, your six liter. This here is a picture of, of, of dual um, systems. They had, um, let me stop this. They had uh, the 6.4 and the 6.7 both use dual coolers. And this is a back, you're looking at the backside of a 6.4 engine. And what you have here is a horizontal EGR cooler it runs along the exhaust manifold. The exhaust would come out of here, run down here, along here, and then run up the vertical cooler over here and then run inside to the EGR valve. So we could cool, we had lots of cooling for that EGR. It also had this EDOC thing right here and whoop, back that up. And that is a, um, this thing here, uh, right here is a small catalytic converter. And what it did was it helped eliminate and reduce hydrocarbons in the EGR system, so we didn't get it help keep the EGR system clean. Okay, so um, this was an early dual EGR cooler system. The I gotta stop this in order to make this. Uh, uh oh, I have to erase that. Hang on. 
Let me get an eraser. Okay. So the 6.7 went a step further. And this is the core of a 6.7. And you can see that you exhaust would run through the center of this pipe and run through all these little tubes on the inside. And this all is inside coolant. So coolant would run down through these and help it keep it cool. And here's a picture of the housing. That sits inside here. And exhaust gases would run through one and then out the other and then into the engine. So it was a, you had two different um, coolers that it ran through to try to get that EGR cool and, and be able to carry it off to the cooling system effectively, more effectively than, than they did on the six liter and have less problems. So um, the, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you in a little while a, a live picture of how, of how, of how this is kind of going to want to operate. I think there's a picture. I don't have it. Inside this is a bypass. The 6.7 has the ability to run the EGR straight up without cooling it down. So we can heat the engine up quicker, or we can pass it through and eat through the cooler or, or bypass you. It's a, it's a valve that kind of goes back and forth. So we can vary how much EGR goes through the cooler here to cool it down. Um, and I'm going to show you, I, I've got a pretty good explanation for that in a little while, how that works. <clears throat> um, so here's a, here's a really good picture of a couple of different uh, kind of coolers. This is, this is like what's in a, a six liter, uh, just like a little radiator, all the exhaust goes through the center here. And then the coolant runs around the outside of it. The early six liters had a system like this where they were just a whole bunch of tubes the, the exhaust went through and uh, then the coolant goes around the outside of them. But that's, that's how those things work. Um, talked about all that. Okay, exhaust valves are nothing more than a valve that just lets the exhaust in. They're a stepper motor type. And they <clears throat> they just meter how much yeah, the computer just is a, you know, a, a pulse. Most of them are pulsed with modulated or some of them are stepper motors. And they would just, um, they're just going to open or close. They, they have a, they work against a spring with a pop-up valve in them. And they just keep the, um, they just meter how much comes in and out or comes into the cylinders. It's all monitored by the um, uh, OBD2 system, very heavily monitored by the OD OBD2 system so that we can know that it's working and that it isn't being tampered with. There's uh, probably three different monitors that are involved with it to make sure that it's working. They're very serious about um, making sure that we don't produce excess knocks in these engines. Um, I'm going to show you how these sensors, uh, kind of work. I got a live model in a little bit here. We're going to use a map, ma you know, manifold pressure, um, EBP sensors, exhaust, you know, it's exhaust back pressure sensors. And we're going to use temperature sensors. The, the six liter was very crude. It didn't have, it, it didn't have any ability to know that it was flowing outside of the mass airflow sensor. Um, but the new, all the six sevens and all those, we actually are watching temperatures of the input and the outlet of the, of the, um, coolers. So we can know, uh, exactly if these EGR valves are working and to what extent they are. And ultimately in today's engines, we actually have knock sensors in the exhaust. So we can actually watch them. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one here in a little while. Um, talked about all of that. We don't care about that. Uh, okay. Maintenance of the systems. Uh, um, there's a lot of things that, um, that can go wrong. We, we've already talked about the EGR coolers are your main one. Your EGR valves will become gummed up and, and full of goo and, and hang open. If they hang open, they cause, you know, they'll cause the engine to stumble, smoke, 
um, any variety of problems with them. Um, they're really, really the new the new ones are really, really sensitive. If they if they're flowing when they shouldn't be flowing, or if they're not flowing when they should, there's a you know there's no shortage of of probably thirty or forty codes that can be set because of these uh, EGR systems. So they're really, really sensitive to it. Um, and they will all set a mill light. I don't think you're going to get, they'll, 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 they'll derate if they're not running properly, um, which means that they're going to, if they're not running right, they could, they could rot, they could, they could depower the engine to make sure that it's not uh, producing emissions that it shouldn't do. Okay, so I've got this here. I th this one is going to be, okay. Yep. I gotta find the volume control on this thing. Hang on, bear with me here. There it is. I got to turn the volume down on these. We didn't know that we didn't know we can make volume when we were making these recordings. You don't want to hear us. <laughs> okay. So what we have here is a six liter. And this came in today. And I'm just going to go through a, a test here with it. We're, um, we're going to test, um, codes on it first. Bear with it here. It's going to just go through a series of tests. I can probably skip forward a little bit here. This is how long it takes us to take the test. So Okay, so now we have we have two codes in this car. One is a turbo overboost, and then one is a turbo underboost code. Okay, and we have what we call freeze frame data, which tells us when that underboost took place. It took place at what, 57 miles an hour, 1600 RPM. Okay, so we're gonna take that information. One of the first things that we're gonna do is we can go through here, we can do an air management test, okay? And one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to test the EGR system. So we tested the EGR system. And it's going to give us some criteria that it needed to meet. The engine was cold, so um, it, it needed to be uh, 185. See over here it says it needs to be 185 degrees before it'll test. So we're running the engine up and warming the engine up so that it'll so that it'll get to temperature here. I think I can heat it. I can I can heat it up faster here. 83, 85, and boom. Okay. So now it wants a key on engine off situation. So we're gonna turn the key off. Some point here, I'm going to turn the key off. There we go. And now it's going to go through a test. Battery voltage was just barely going to let us do it. Okay, so it's going to it's going to go through the first part of the test. It's going to test the engine, the, looking for the coolant temperature, and to make sure the EGR valve up on the top right there is closed. Let me let me. I didn't speak fast enough. Okay. It's going to look at this EGR valve position, make sure it was it was closed and it was satisfied. Now it's going to do is going to look at um, three other sensors to make sure all those sensors are within each other. Those are all pressure sensors and key on engine off. Those should all be at barometric pressure, which is about right, 14.3, 14.4, right in right at our barometric pressure. Okay. So now we're going to go through a test. It's this the the computer's just testing itself. The IDS is running itself through a test. It's, we have our coolant temperature and our valve position over here. And then the center one is what's being commanded. It's commanding the valve open and you can see it in the valve position that it's open and it's graphing it here. So you can see the top one here is EGR valve 
of being commanded. <clears throat> and what you're seeing below is what it's what is what the valve is actually doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it wants to do it, and it gives you this this green dragon here. It gives us that. If it stays within that, um, then we're then we're then we're a pass. It's going to do it twice. What will happen on these is sometimes if the sensors are bad or something doesn't open quite right, is it'll run and it may be running here to the bottom and, and it'll turn red or they'll stay open too long and hang out over here and then drop down, something like that. <clears throat> but usually this pretty reliable test. If it, if it passes this test, we can pretty much be sure that this is okay. Because remember, if we're testing, if we're, the turbocharger is going to be directly affected by the EGR and the EGR is going to be directly affected by the turbocharger. So we need to make sure that everything's operating properly before we start hucking parts at this thing. Okay. <clears throat> so we can see that this valve is working. Okay. Now this, this test, after this is done here, it's going to take us through a series of engine running tests and it's going to watch, it's going to check the VGT operation as well as the EGR in, in their relation to see, make sure that it's all working good. So we're going to click the tick over here on the right here. It's just going to tell us that a uh, little bit about the test itself. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the test. It's going to ask us to start the engine. <clears throat> Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to command anything with a little equal sign on it right there. It has the ability to command those. So it's going to uh, command RPM. It's going to command uh, the VGT. It's going to command EGR. So right now we've got the, EG, the VGT closed down. EGR is about half open. Okay. And it's going to look at all these different parameters and see, make sure everything's within spec. And it just kind of does it on its own. Kind of nice. And you can see everything's in the green. Everything looks good. I guess I should have thrown something, should have thrown a monkey wrench in there and showed you a bad one, but I got a, a bad one here in a little while, something else. goes through its total of six tests here. It's test number five. You can see what it's doing is it's 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 setting the VGT and the EGR at different levels and the different RPMs and just testing its ability to control things. So according to everything we're seeing here, everything's fine. But obviously that car came in that car came in with something that's actually very unusual it came in with a high boost and a low boost okay so um, uh, an over boost is going to be something over 21 usually that engine's going to boost about 21 psi of, of boost and um, so and it should get there rapidly so if it gets, if we're going to be at, it's what, what that PO234 code does is if this thing's that's sitting above uh, 25, 26 PSI for more than 15 seconds, it flags that code and just derates the engine. And I mean, just takes your power away because it doesn't, what it's trying to do is protect from an overboost. Because what happens if we overboost, especially a six liter, we make too much pressure in the cylinders. We can stretch head bolts, blow head gaskets and have all kinds of problems. So we don't wanna do that. The 299 code says we're under boost in the same way if it's driving and it's look, if it's commanding a boost and it doesn't see that boost, it sees low for a given period of time, it's gonna flag that and, and turn a check engine light on. So for, that, for this car to come in and say, hey, it's got an over boost and an under boost, typically gonna mean that that VGT actuator inside there is is sticking you know because right now it's all working good in fact i'll i've got i think the next slide here i guess i should have blown that up before i put it in here huh this one is 
Sorry. I needed to heat it up to make this work. Wait a minute, I think I got the wrong slide. Hang on a second. We have this one. We have this one. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one first. Okay. Um, this one here is the same six liter. We went ahead and pulled codes on it again, but I wanted to show you a different test. This is a boost. This is just a simple boost test. We're just going to check the turbocharger's um, ability to um, the VGT. Is the VGT working now? Watch. You can watch what it goes through a test here. Again, it's we're testing those pressure sensors again. Are those are all our pressure sensors within spec? And they are. So we're going to start the engine. And it's going. To, what it's going to do is we're going to raise the RPM. You can see it went up to 1,200 RPM. We turn the EGR valve off and the VGT is at zero, so it's open. So now we're gonna progressively close the VGT. And as we close the VGT, remember those nozzles are now going to, to change how they're gonna push uh, exhaust onto that turbine valve and, and boom, see how we've made, what we ended up making here was, was exhaust back pressure and boost pressure, okay? So we knew that as, as, we, as we move that VGT up and back down, we, we saw movement in this thing, okay? So now we're gonna do it again. We're gonna, we're gonna retest the thing again. But what I did was I went outside and I unplugged the VGT actuator. So we're gonna So we've set RPM, the EGR is at zero, VGT is at zero. Okay, now it's climbing, 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 climbing. So it's commanding it, but now nothing's happening, okay? And it comes on back down and you can see that the, um, as opposed to the first one where the, we saw the exhaust back pressure climb and we saw boost climb. Now the, the VGT actuator is not working. <clears throat> and this would be just kind of an example of what you would see if the, if the actuator itself was actually hung up or stuck in the, in the, in that thing. Cause as that remember is that, is that VGT operates inside there. It's, it's in a dirty, horrible environment inside the exhaust and it gets rusty and it gets hung up. And that's what's happening to this car is, is, it's getting hung up. It's working, you know, it works sometimes work doesn't work sometimes. So it, it has all kinds of problems like that. So that's why it gives you an overboost and underboost. And then they bring it in and we test it here. And it's like, Hey, this thing looks like it's working fine. You know, stick, shove it out the door, but it's not, it's got a, it's got a turbocharger problem. So, um, so the last slide that I have in here is kind of fun. And it is, this is a 6.7. And what I was doing with it is we're trying to heat it up. Because I had to have the exhaust in, in the 400 degree range to make this work. So it's probably horrible standing on your end, huh? What we're doing here is I'm going to show you we're going to clear these things all out and we're going to pick, we're going to look at some stuff in here. We're going to look at uh, the exhaust bypass valve. Remember I told you that we could bypass the coolers on that 6.7. 
We look at the EGR valve. We want to look at the exhaust temperature and uh, uh, the second exhaust sensor, the RPM. We want to be able to uh, close off the VGT. Got to be able to find it in there. It is right there. Okay. And then we want to also look at uh, NOx 11 and 12. We can actually measure and see the NOx coming out the tailpipe of this engine. Okay. We're measuring all those things. Those numbers up on the top up there, top left. That's the NOx coming out of the engine before it gets to the after treatment system. And the, and the second number is what's going out the tailpipe. Those are in parts per million. Okay. So um, what I'm doing here is I've commanded the EGR valve to zero. Now with the EGR valve off, okay, let's, let's back this up a little bit. I'm sorry, that went too far. Okay, so I've, I've commanded the EGR, I'm commanding it, and I'm going to turn it off. So we've got about 105 parts per million. And look, look at those knocks, look at the knocks number. Ah, what did I just do? What did I do? I just went to the wrong car. I'm sorry. Bear with me. I am struggling to keep this, get the right thing on here. All right. So there you go. Okay. <clears throat> so I commanded the EGR valve off. And you can see those knock. These are actually parts per million coming out, coming out of the engine before it gets to the exhaust. So we were at 105 parts per million, and we we turning it off. We went up to 312. So you can see where when we how much how much that EGR was actually. And this is just it. I mean, this thing here is at idle, and just how much we were able to clean the knocks up on this engine just by having the EGR valve on. And we can do that by turning it off. And we can see what it's doing. So we can know this EGR valve's kind of working. Okay. Okay. When it comes back on, boom, you can see those numbers drop right back down again. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to raise the engine RPM up. And give it, I think, around 1,200 RPM, 1,100. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to close the, EG, the VGT off to give us, we're going to try to give us some back pressure. Okay, and what we're doing is we're going to test this. We're, our goal here is we want to test this, this bypass valve. We want, to see if, we want to see if the EGR cooler is plugged. And so let me, let me just pause this and let me explain what I'm doing. So the EGR comes into this engine or the exhaust gas comes into this engine, goes through a valve. It can go straight into the engine or we can put it through the cooler. There's a bypass valve to, that can do that. Okay, one of the problems this, this truck will have is if that cooler plugs up, well, then, then you, the exhaust can't flow through it and we end up with exhaust flow problems. Okay, and it'll, and it'll, we'll have codes that'll tell us we have problems. Okay, so we can test that by turning the bypass valve on and off because if, if, we, if we send exhaust gas through the bypass valve and the bypass valve is, you know, through the cooler and it's plugged up, it's like turning the valve off and it, and it's, and it will change and it'll show up in our mass airflow here. Let me show you as we come up here, we're going to, the bypass valve is on. And we're going to turn it off. Okay. And if we watch our mass airflow in here, down here, and we turn that bypass valve back on again, see the little jump we had right here in the, in the mass air. And I'm going to blow that up here in just a second. Sorry, 
we're talking on this board. Okay, we're gonna do it again. We see the little jump, we're gonna capture it here in a second. Okay, we captured the event. <clears throat> now we can come down here and we can rec we recorded it. We can blow that up, but you can see right there is when we had that change with the bypass valve. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. You're going to get a little bit of that, so it's not that big a deal. But if it was, if this was a little bit greater, we would know that we have a restriction going through that EGR valve, or through that EGR cooler, then we know we need to change that cooler. This one has some restriction, but it isn't enough that we would want to worry about it but I just wanted to show you, we can see, we're able to see restrictions in the EGR cooler. We can tell if the EGR valve is working or not. We can watch those NOx numbers. Um, when we get into the, some of the after treatment systems, we're gonna we'll try to explain how all these NOx numbers work and how they should react against each other and be able to diagnose what's happening with those exhausts. And, and it's, um, it gets pretty complicated, uh, but, it's, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of fun because we can, because, when we get into the after treatment with the SCR on, not next week, we'll do that on following Tuesday, uh, I think the weekend of Thanksgiving, week of Thanksgiving, we're going to actually introduce um, exhaust fluid into the exhaust, into a catalyst, and that's going to affect these this NOx 12 number, because that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to take this NOx 11 number, which is this raw, this is raw NOx coming out of the engine, and we're going to take that and we're trying to reduce it down to anywhere from we're, tr we're trying to keep it we're trying to keep it down to somewhere between le somewhere less than 10 parts per million going out the tailpipe. Um, I was working on one the other day that I was struggling to get anything more than zero out of the tailpipe. It was that clean. So we've got some really clean engines coming out there. These these diesel engines that we're playing with today are clean, way cleaner than any gas engine on the road. So um there was a lot of talk over the last, you know, maybe five years about completely getting diesels off the road. Europe had, Europe had conversations about completely eliminating diesel and they're really heavily diesel over there, but the manufacturers and everybody's come, come around and these things, these things are cleaner than the gas engine. So I'm pretty sure the diesel engines here to stay for a long time. So I don't want to, I don't want to belabor this whole EGR thing. Does everybody understand how it, how it uh, how it works? Did I make sense about how it works? It's we're we're it's an in in vehicle strategy or in cylinder strategy to try to reduce the emissions. Okay, we're trying to uh, the big gas numbers, the gas things that you're trying to look at are nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, um, and we're trying to stop those from being produced in the cylinder. And um, those are going to happen because of high pressures and high temperatures, temperatures above 2,500 um, degrees. And, and those are going to, and, and we're going to introduce that EGR into the system because it's going to, it's going to do two things. It's going to cool the combustion chamber and it's going to separate those particles, those, those um, uh, fuel and air particles so that we can slow combustion down. Okay. We're trying to slow those peak pressures and temperatures down so that we don't form EGR in the first place. Okay. Does that make sense? The readings that are in the book are not long and they're really good. So if you want to take the time to do that, go ahead. Um, as far as your midterm is concerned, I don't care if you use the book. I don't care if you use Google or if you watch any of my wonderful zooms. Um, I just want them in your own words. Okay. Please don't plagiarize anything. Don't cut and paste anything. Cause I'll be able to cut. I'll be able to tell if you cut and paste plus it goes into a safe assigned thing. So um, just um, 
just give me something in your own words. This is the best to the best of your ability. Okay. If you don't, if you don't get it, it's no big deal. I will, I will tell you, you don't get it and we'll work it out and, and get you all the points you got. I, my goal is that you understand all this stuff. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? You said we could choose whichever topic, correct? Yep. You can pick, I don't care. You can pick EGR, you can pick turbos, you can pick uh, charger coolers, you can pick um, common rail, Huey, low pressure, high pressure. You could, you could tell me, uh, you can write, if you want to write, you know, a half a page on what a hydraulic neutral injector is, you know, a hydraulic nu a neutral nozzle is, and so that I understand it, if you just any, any little thing about you, you can talk about the entire system or you can tire, tell me about one little part of a system. I just want you to, to explain something that, you know, okay, super easy. And, but you're going to pick two different ones. Okay. The minimum is two. Every other one you get, I'm going to give you 10 more bonus points on top of that. Okay. Cool. If you write, 10 of them and I got to read 10 of them, I might get a little mad, but oh, it's I won't do 10. Okay. So Arturo and Gavin, you understand everything good? Yeah. It makes sense yeah. to me. Okay. Then, um, then do it. Have a good week and I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank All right. You. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. You too.